July has started and it's time to look at what's new in the latest release of Home Assistant. Today we will be looking at features in a couple of categories. What's new with voice, UI, service and automations and of course other noteworthy changes. We'll start in a couple of seconds. This video has been recorded on the beta version of Home Assistant, Beta 3, and while it is stable currently, there still may be some things that will be added or removed in the final release of Home Assistant. So let's get cracking with what's new. I'll divide this video in a couple of categories. We will first start with the what's new with the voice. Everybody knows that you can start Assist by clicking on the Assist icon in the top right corner. And if you have HTTPS connection or secure connection, and this is not a requirement for Home Assistant, this is actually a browser requirement, then you can start the mic and start talking to your Assist. But there has been improvements, and not only one. If we click on three dots, edit dashboard, click on add card, select button card, and then choose tap action. Instead of toggle, you can use assist, and then select your preferred assistant. I have a couple here, I will select default my assist English and click start listening. Click save. And we can click on this button and it will automatically start to listen in to what we want to say to our home assistant. Yes, I know, this is still not a wake up word, but it's much easier to use it now than it was to go to the upper right corner and clicking on the mic itself. And you can also configure it two ways. First, you can select this start listening and the mic will automatically start to listen, but you can also disable it. And then when you press it, you need to click on the mic to start the listening process. While we are already talking about this, did you know that there is a beta channel for the Home Assistant companion app for the Android phones? And if you are lucky one to join the beta channel, then you also have some additional functionality that will be available in the next release that is currently in the beta channel. For example, if you go to the settings on your mobile phone, you can now select the default assistant. And yes, assist is available as a default assistant. And that means that you can use either buttons or gestures to start your assist from home assistant from within any app or any screen on your Android phone. No, wake up word still doesn't work. There is one additional thing that you can, for example, do. If we go to automations, create new automation, as a trigger, select sentence. You can type a sentence and then you can add whatever actions you want. This allows you greater flexibility. You can use whatever sentence you want to trigger something in Home Assistant. It can be shields up, start alarm, protect home, whatever sentence works for you or your family. And then you can create action or list of actions that will be triggered by that sentence. If we click save, go back to overview, shields up, done. That means that the system has done whatever we have created in the actions. It is much easier way to play with the sentences or speech recognition inside Home Assistant Assist. In the next release of ESP Home, we will be receiving some additional functionalities related to the voice that some of you will like. And no, still no wake up word. It will take some time, a bit of harder tinkering and a lot of cost with time and material and money to do the wake up thing thingy. While we are already in the UI, let's look at some of the UI changes. Last release brought us changes to the light entities. You can drag, drop them, change effects, play with it and customize it to your own liking. In this release we have something new. This time we have a new UI lock card, where you can lock or unlock your door and have a much nicer UI for any of your smart locks. Something else has been added to Home Assistant which doesn't directly fall into the UI change, but since you can present it in the UI, let's talk about it here. There is now something that is called image entities, 
we already have camera entities, those were added a couple of releases back. But now, if the device supports, it can push the image entity. Currently only MQTT and templates, plus FreezeBox supported. For the FreezeBox, for example, you can pull the QR code for the guest network. Hopefully soon other integrations will use that too. And if you want to present that image entity inside the UI, you can of course use the picture card. In the last release we have seen the addition of cut and paste inside automations and scripts. Now we can also use that one inside the UI itself. Click on three dots, cut card, add card and paste from clipboard. Save. This can also be done with the nested cards, for example horizontal or vertical stacking. And it doesn't have to be cut, it can be copy and that makes it easier for you to copy cards from the one tab to the other. When we are already talking about the cards, there are two additional things that are really nice. Everybody has issues, well, since we do not have drag and drop still in the UI itself, how to align the cards what card is at what position. Now we have numbers next to each up and down error that show that this is the first card, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eight, nine, ten and eleven. That makes it easy now to see at what position each of the cards is. But that's not all. If we for example click on the number we can change the position, in this case from a card on position 11 to card at the position number 1. Click on OK and the card will be moved to the first place. Let's look at two additional changes inside the UI or related to UI. If we go to settings page, you can see that there have been additional changes to the integrations page. Developers have listened to the comments and suggestions from all of you and have moved the icons so that they do not block the icons of the integrations themselves. If you want to go on the integrations detail page, you just click on the header part and it will open the card that was added in the previous release of Home Assistant. And the last thing that is more behind the scenes, but it can also translate to the UI change is the time zones. You can see that we now have time zone selection. You can either use local time zone or you can use server time zone. Why would you do this? Well, in my case, I wouldn't, because I'm mostly in the same or near the same time zone. But for example, if you have a remote location that is in a different time zone and you are browsing it from another time zone, that way you can either see the time on the server as is on the server or according to your local browser settings. Now let's look at the changes related to services and automations. If we click on settings page, go to automations, scenes and scripts, there is now a new script dialog. It is now the same as the automations one. For example, you can create a new script or you can create a script from the blueprints itself. So this has been tweaked and now it looks more or less the same as the one in automations page. But that's not all. If any of the automations or scripts is unavailable, you will see here a red icon. The reason for this visual change so that you can see with the color change if it's red, it doesn't work, is because sometimes the automations that have been created in the files, external automations, wouldn't be listed here in the list if they fail to start. So you even wouldn't know that the automation is not working and it would be missing from the list itself. Now we have a better logging so you can easily see both for automations and scripts where the error is, but with the addition of the color change to the automation and script, you can identify what is the automation that is not loading up. When we talked about voice, I did mention the changes in a future release of ESP Home. And in the next release of ESP Home, ESP Home 2023.7, there will also be changes to the BLE once again. It will be once again improved, it will have much better Bluetooth proxy support and you should probably once again flash your devices not via the over-the-air update but using the cable itself. And by the comments of the developers, this release will improve further on the speed of Bluetooth proxies. Let's talk about two new service calls. If we go to services, type in calendar, list events, 
we can now list all the events based on a date time criteria. For example, start time, you can select today's date, time, and then you can either select end date or the duration. Duration can be in hours, minutes, or seconds. For this test, let's use end time. Let's select this Sunday. Now that we have set start and end time and date, we have to select entity. Unfortunately, during my testing, I wasn't able to use more than one calendar. Choose entity, for example, select school calendar and click on call service. And what is new, now you will receive response. That also means that services can now give you values. You can call them and they can give you a result back. In this case, I have a list of all the events that will be happening during this time frame for this specific calendar. And this, of course, is a local calendar, this one here. Now let's check YouTube calendar. Developer tools, services, let's remove school, choose YouTube, call service. This is the list of the events from that calendar. This, of course, can be used for many, many things. For example, previously I was using a HACS component for garbage collection. Now I can use the local integration. I can use this for a trigger in the morning routines. Also, it can be used in alarms in the future when the school starts, when there are some activities for the kids, or as a reminder when I should release a video for the YouTube channel members, but also general public release. But that's not all. There is something else too. We now have conversation process service too. That one is great if you are planning to use Home Assistant Assist or Voice Assist in Home Assistant with the OpenAI. And there is also one great blueprint that you can use to test this functionality. Of course, you need to have OpenAI set as a conversation agent in the Home Assistant. And if you forgot how you do that, you go to the settings, integrations, click on add integration, type OpenAI, Click on it and just paste the API key. When you create the account, you will receive a free credit, I think $18. Unfortunately, after it expires, you have to have a valid account with the credit card payment set up. But don't worry, you can set the limits. For example, I've set two limits. Soft limit, when I receive notification, is at $8 per month. And the hard limit is $10 per month. So I can never ever use with OpenAI more than that. After you've set up the OpenAI, go to the GitHub link that will be down in the video description and we need to use this blueprint. Copy the URL that is in the video description, go to your Home Assistant, go to Automations and Scripts, Blueprint, click on Import Blueprint and paste the link to the Blueprint, the demo Blueprint here. Click on Preview. Since I already have it installed, I will not be pressing Import Blueprint, but after you press Import Blueprint, you will see it here. Click on it and then you can configure it. This is the blueprint we will be using. You can set up the notification time, for example, this time now. Select the notification service. This is notification service for my Telegram platform. Select the calendar entity, how many hours to look ahead. Select the weather entity, select your home zone entity, select the conversation agent. The conversation agent needs to be OpenAI and this is the conversation agent prompt. Click on save. I will say it like this and rename or save. Now in the list of automations, you should see something like this. Of course, this is my previous test and this is the new test. If we click on it, we will see everything that we have set up previously. We can click on three dots, click run, and it will run this automation. If we click on traces and look for the output, this is the output information that was sent to my Telegram and we will check it in a couple of seconds. But instead of Telegram, you can of course also use text-to-speech. Good afternoon, here is some helpful information for you. The current information, we have two events in a school calendar. This is the first event, the second event, and please note, it's always a good idea to check Home Assistant app for more control of your devices. Have a great day. And this really opens up the world of the AI and the assistance for use with Google Home Assist. Remember, this is just a test template that you can use to see how everything works and of course, you can reuse parts of the code for your own implementation. Now let's look at some other noteworthy changes. For example, matter changes. A lot has been done in the improvements and stability in the matter integration. Such as, for example, 
subscriptions are now optimized for larger networks, which improves, of course, speed, start type times is now blazing fast, faster state updates, changes to the bridges are now instantly detected, better logging, etc. And in other, other noteworthy changes, we have changed to the HomeKit controller. It is now called HomeKit device. ESP Home now has support for alarm control panels. This has been brought in the ESP Home 2023.6. Humidifiers now have attributes for the current humidity, and thanks to the update, it has also now been pushed to Google Assistant integrations. Apple TV now supports launching apps with deep links. MQTT integration supports water heaters and a lot, lot more. I do also have to mention changes to the Samba integration or Samba mounts, which was added in the previous release of Home Assistant. Due to a lot of comments, support for Samba 1 has been added. While some of you may think that this is good, I really do ask you do not use Samba 1. It is unsecure. Unsecure and it can bring you pain in the long term. Try to update your servers so that they support uh, newer versions of Samba. But that's not all. Samba guest access has also been implemented. So now you can use the guest accounts to access your Samba shares. And of course, the last thing that we need to mention is breaking changes. The biggest breaking change is change to breaking changes. It is now official. A document has been published on the 15th of June, 2023, that describes how the things will be changed and how the breaking changes will be introduced in the future releases of Home Assistant. So far, it was more or less goodwill of developers to push, notify and give information about the breaking change. Now, there is a six month or six release cycle window where something can be announced as a breaking change until this breaking change comes into effect. So if, for example, you are updating your home assistant two times per year, you still will have enough time to fix your breaking changes before something really breaks. If you're interested to read the whole document, I will be leaving a link down in the video description. And this is it for this July release of Home Assistant. I really am looking forward to all of the changes that are related to voice. Yes, I do know that a lot of you still is waiting for the wake up words. But unfortunately, implementing wake up words, no matter what you think, is really hard. And it will either require some special equipment or it can bring costs onto end users. And this is something that developers are really working hard to avoid both of those cases. So be patient. If it's feasible, if it's doable, it will be available down the road. But I was really impressed on how I can now substitute the Google Assistant on my mobile phone with the Home Assistant Assist and have easier access to my Home Assistant from within Android phones. What are your favorite changes in this release of Home Assistant? What do you like and what do you hate? As I will be on the vacation during the August release of Home Assistant, there will be no video on the next release of Home Assistant. But who knows, maybe I will have a spare video to release during my vacation time. And before I end up this video, I really would like to thank all those wonderful people that are supporting me on the YouTube channel and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. Let's not forget each and every one of you also who has watched, liked or subscribed to my channel. If you too would like to support the channel, you can do it in two ways. First option is to go down and click on the join button down below and becoming a YouTube channel member for only 2 euros or 2 dollars per month. Or the second option is to go to my merchandise store and check out because there is some new merchandise there. We don't call it merch because we are adults. I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.